Hello, I'm Nathalie Kolba from the Agroecology Unit at Inra Dijon in Eastern France. My lecture today will be about how we use a weed dynamics model called FLORSIS to design new cropping systems, including intercrops, with a particular focus on uh, weed management. Weeds are considered to be the pest that is most damaging to crop production because weeds compete with the crops for light and soil resources, and they can also host and feed other pests such as insects or pathogens. But in our kind of landscapes, weeds are essential for biodiversity. They are the main component of wild plant biodiversity, and they contribute to feeding other organisms such as farmland birds or pollinators. Until recently, Weeds were managed with our frequent applications of herbicides, but today we have to reduce herbicide use because of environmental issues and health issues. And this means that we have to design new cropping systems that use little or no herbicides and uh, that combine all other cropping techniques. With the same aim, we still have to reduce our wheat harmfulness for crop production, but we now also want to increase wheat contribution to biodiversity. Intercropping is a main lever in these new cropping systems because when you combine different cropping species, you leave fewer niches, fewer resources available for the weeds. To design uh, these new cropping systems, particularly those including intercrops, we first of all have to understand how well, weeds um, affect crop production, how they cause damage to crop production. And this means we have to understand how crops and weeds interact. We also have to understand how weeds produce seeds and how these seeds survive in the soil and how they infest future crops. Then we have to understand how cropping techniques influence these interactions between crops and weeds and the multi-annual dynamics of weed seeds in the soil. We then have to understand how uh, to combine uh, the different cropping techniques uh, in order to reconcile these different objectives, uh, reducing weed harmfulness to crop production on one hand, increasing weed contribution to biodiversity on the other hand, while still using few or no herbicides. And uh, this means we have a very complex system. We have long-term effects, we have many different factors, we have quite a lot of interactions, we have different species, and this means that we need models. And in particular, we need mechanistic models, which are based on a representation of biophysical processes, uh, which are behind the effect of cropping techniques on weed dynamics and on crop production. And today I'm going to show you how we did this uh, in the example of the FLOSIS model and how we use this model to uh, design and evaluate cropping systems. FLOSIS can be considered as a virtual experimental field on which we experiment, uh, we test different cropping systems. The user enters a very detailed list of operations in terms of dates and options. We also need daily weather over different years and a description of soil characteristics. All these inputs then influence um, the annual life cycle of crops and uh, weeds. Uh, this life cycle is a succession of different stages which interact with cropping techniques, with weather and with uh, soil state variables. We, for instance, have viable dormant and non-dormant seeds in the soil. This will germinate and then emerge. Uh, the canopy is represented in 3D with an individual representation of each crop and weed plant. We have a phenology submodel which simulates, which predicts when our plants start to flower and mature. Weed seeds are added to the seed bank and can then survive over time. And crop seeds are exported and yield is calculated. And all these relationships are based on a mechanistic description of biophysical processes. This very detailed representation allows us to have also very detailed outputs uh, on, um, um, on state variables describing the soil, the weeds and the crops. And this is done at a daily time step and in 3D. And this is essential to understand why a given cropping technique or a given cropping system has a given performance in terms of production, weed harmfulness uh, or weed contribution to biodiversity. And to simplify, 
implementation of different cropping systems, the very detailed outputs are translated into indicators. Um, and these indicators were developed together with different kind of stakeholders, including farmers, crop advisors, ecologists, etc. We have first of all indicators of crop production, such as yield, indicators of uh, wheat benefits, such as wheat contribution to feeding pollinators, and wheat indicators of uh, harmfulness for production, such as yield loss. Clauses can then be used in different ways to contribute to cropping system design. First of all, we can evaluate current farming practices. This means that uh, we go out and uh, perform surveys in different regions and also use records from weather stations. All this is then fed into flosses, which simulates wheat dynamics and crop production, uh, as well as wheat uh, benefits and wheat harmfulness for crop production. Instead of evaluating current farming practices, we can also simulate uh, prototypes, uh, which are, for instance, based on random choices of cropping techniques. And this is the equivalent of a sensitivity analysis, where the aim is to identify the major levers for uh, wheat management. However, uh, if we build random cropping systems, they do not necessarily answer uh, to the objectives and concerns that the farmers have. So another way is to work directly with farmers, for instance, in uh, workshops aiming uh, at designing cropping systems. Uh, in these uh, workshops, farmers and other experts, such as scientists, uh, first of all, dis um, determine the aims and the constraints, and then uh, propose prototypes that should answer to these aims and constraints. Prototypes are then fed into flosses, which simulates weeds and crops, and predicts the different indicators of production, uh, weed damage, and uh, weed benefits. The uh, workshop participants then analyze these uh, simulation outputs and, if necessary, improve the prototypes and then run again simulations. This design simulation uh, loop can be automatic if FLOSSES is combined with optimization algorithms. Today, I'm going to present you a simulation study that is based on a workshop with farmers, where the objective was to design cropping systems, including intercrops, with a particular focus uh, on wheat management. In the first step during the workshop, the farmers and the scientists proposed annual management plans for intercrops. These were then upscaled to the cropping system scale and translated into rules uh, that uh, were fed into flosses. In the third step, FLOSS is then was run over different years to get a long-term multi-annual evaluation of wheat benefits and wheat uh, harmfulness indicators. And in the fourth step, we ran a diagnostic to understand, to identify the technical drivers of cropping system performance. So, so now starting uh, with the workshops uh, where uh, the different uh, management plans were designed. The workshops were held in the Département de Haute-Garonne in southwestern France and focused on organic agriculture. This is the example of a wheat fiber bean intercrop. Um, the objective of the farmers here was uh, to have a high quality uh, wheat production. Fiber bean was associated to provide nitrogen to the wheat crop. And um, another objective was to be able to have a, uh, a production even if the weather were bad. Here on the bottom of the slide, you can see a summary of the management plan in terms of tillage operations, sowing strategy, weeding operations, etc. These annual management plans then had to be upscaled to the cropping system scale. And to do this, we use data from experts and also from cropping system trials. Here the example of Inray Toulouse. Um, this is an example of a six-year rotation of barley, camelina, maize, wheat, buckwheat and soybean. And actually, the, uh, this control scenario was split into two, depending on how summer fallow was managed, either with cover crops or the more by plowing. Based on this rotation, we then designed three uh, intercropping strategies, replacing uh, pure stand crops at different locations in the rotation with intercrop um, management plans that uh, had been designed during the workshops. So we have uh, for instance, uh, wheat fiber bean instead of wheat, or a barley pea instead of a pure stand barley. And then the decision rules that were designed during the workshops were translated into detailed list of operations in terms of, yeah, for instance, tillage tools, 
uh, dates, uh, tillage depth, etc. In total, we had four control cropping systems without any intercropping and 18 systems with, uh, uh, with at least one year with intercropping. All these were then fed into flosses to run simulations and get a, pred a prediction of uh, wheat harmfulness for crop production, uh, crop production and wheat contribution to biodiversity. Actually, we ran two series of uh, simulations. In the first series, the cropping systems uh, started with the regional wheat flora, and in the second series, the simulation started with the wheat-free field. The first series gives us uh, actual yield in the presence of weeds. The second series gives us potential yield in the absence of any weed, and the comparison of the two gives us yield loss due to weeds. In each series, each cropping system was simulated over 30 years to get long-term effects and repeated with 10 different weather series to get an idea of their robustness relatively to weather hazards. These simulations were carried out disregarding any uh, nitrogen or water stress after plant emergence. First of all, first of all we had a look at trade-offs among weed impacts with the principal component analysis on the 22 cropping systems, 30 years and 10 weather repetitions. For instance, if we look at a uh, correlation between yield and yield loss on one hand and herbicide use on the other hand, there was no correlation in these different cropping systems, which means that if we reduce herbicide use intensity, uh, yield loss does not necessarily increase and yield does not necessarily decrease. Similarly, there was no correlation between yield uh, or yield loss on one hand and biodiversity on the other hand. This means that cropping systems that increase weed contribution to biodiversity do not necessarily increase yield loss or decrease yield. Finally, the correlation between actual yield in the presence of weeds and potential yield in the absence of weeds was also very low. And this means that cropping systems that aim to maximize potential yield are usually not the ones that are best at controlling weeds. We then compare the different cropping systems at the cropping system scale. Uh, here we have, for instance, four different strategies, either control without any intercropping, and then three uh, intercropping strategies, either with wheat pea, uh, with uh, barley, uh, faba bean, or with both types of intercropping. And then for each of these four strategies, we have two different uh, fallow management strategies, either more plowing or cover crops. We then looked at different indicators here, uh, for instance, indicators of wheat flora in terms of species richness or field infestation. Then we have um, in an indicator of uh, wheat contribution to biodiversity here, uh, here um, uh, food offer for farmland birds. And finally, we have indicators of wheat impact on production. We have yield in the presence of weeds, we have yield loss due to weeds, and we have harvest contamination by weed seeds and debris. For each of these columns, the cells were colored from uh, green, which means the best situation, that means the highest biodiversity or the highest production, and the lowest are uh, wheat harmfulness, uh, to red, which means um, the lowest biodiversity, the lowest production, or the highest uh, wheat harmfulness. We do not have the time to go into uh, all the details. Just a few examples. Um, for instance, if we compare here uh, the control without intercrop intercropping on the first line to two examples of intercropping, we see that there's no systematic increase or decrease uh, here, for instance, of yield due to intercropping. If we introduce wheat pea intercropping into the scenario, we have an increase in uh, average yield, whereas uh, when we introduce barley fiber bean, we have a decrease in the average yield. What we also see is that management effects are often much more important than intercropping effects. If we look here at field infestation by weeds, uh, the green arrows show that introducing intercropping uh, only slightly decreased field infestation, where switching from more replying to cover crops during summer fallow considerably increased field infestation. To understand the differences between cropping systems, we ran a diagnostic at the annual scale. Here we looked at weed yield in the presence of weeds, either in a pure stand or intercrop with faba bean or pea. 
if wheat is intercropped with faba bean, its yield is reduced by approximately 80% compared to wheat in a pure stand, whereas wheat with uh, pea has approximately the same yield as in a pure stand. To understand these differences, we first of all looked at potential yield, which comes from the simulations without any weeds and allows us to understand crop-crop interactions. Again, if wheat is intercropped with faba bean, its yield decreases by approximately 80%, whereas if uh, wheat is intercropped with pea, there's nearly no change in yield compared to wheat in a pure stand. This means that wheat growth is hindered much more by faba bean, uh, and there's actually not much effect of uh, pea on wheat growth. And finally, to understand crop wheat interactions, we looked at yield loss due to weeds. If wheat is intercropped with faba bean, its yield loss increases by more than 100% compared to wheat in a pure stand, whereas wheat intercropped with pea has a decrease of 10% in terms of yield loss. This means that wheat growth is hindered by pea, whereas it is not hindered at all by faba bean, it actually increases in the presence of faba bean. We can then do the same kind of analysis looking at the yield of other crops starting here with faba bean either in a pure stand or in Dactrobus triticale or wheat. Conclusion is that cereals hinder both wheat growth and faba bean growth, but triticale is more competitive than wheat as it reduces uh, potential yield and yield loss more than uh, wheat. Here we have the same kind of data for pea either in a pure stand or intercrop of wheat or barley. The conclusion is that cereals hinder the growth of both pea and wheat, but the reduction in pea growth is much, much more important than the reduction in wheat growth. And finally, we looked at barley either in a pure stand or intercrop of pea, and here pea has nearly no effect on either barley growth or wheat growth. The previous analysis was carried out at the scale of the individual crop species. Here we now looked at crop production at the scale of the intercrop. And in this case, in uh, the three examples presented in this table, intercropping increased crop production uh, compared to a pure stand by 6 to 17 percent in the presence of weeds. However, if there were no weeds uh, in the simulation, in that case, intercropping at best had no effect or could even reduce uh, production as in the example of the wheat feather bean intercrop. This means that we have to continue our diagnostic. We first of all want to understand uh, which crop traits optimize crop-crop interactions in the absence of any weeds. And then we want to identify crop traits that allow to regulate weeds. And uh, we also want to know which cropping techniques are best to control weeds. In conclusion, FLOSIS is essential for multi-criteria evaluation of newly designed cropping systems, and it makes it possible to run a diagnostic to understand the performance of these novel cropping systems. The simulations uh, make it also possible to evaluate wheat impacts that are difficult or even impossible to measure in fields, such as wheat contribution to feeding farmland birds or pollinators. The simulations are also essential for long-term evaluation of the different cropping system effects. And this long-term evaluation is absolutely essential if we are interested in wheat management, because wheat seeds survive for several years in the soil. And this means that the decision that is taken today will have impacts on future crops. The FLOSIS version that was used in the present study uh, did not include competition for nitrogen water. And we are presently working on these two aspects in other projects. The simulations I showed you uh, demonstrate that intercropping reduces wheat harmfulness for crop production and also the need for mineral fertilizer. Simulations showed that yield loss in legume crops decreased if uh, these crops were intercropped with cereals, even though no herbicides were applied in the simulations. Similarly, the simulations showed that potential yield in cereals uh, remained more or less unchanged uh, when intercropped with legumes, even though no fertilizer was applied. But we still have to fine tune the management plans for uh, the intercrops and to adapt them to production context as well as to the objectives of the different farmers. And there are quite a lot of trade offs between the different wheat impacts. So we need to let the stakeholders choose uh, the cropping system or the management plan that uh, 
best fits their objectives or their constraints. And actually, there is no unique solution that is valid everywhere. We need flexible rules uh, so that stakeholders can choose what is best for their uh, local situation. And this means that we need models to establish these rules. And if you want to uh, know a bit more, here you have a list of a few recent publications that synthesize how we develop the model and how it can be used. And finally, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to get into touch with me. You will find my email address on the first slide. Thank you very much.